I caught my sister's fiancé breaking into my house to steal my dead mom's wedding dress. It's quite a surprise for me, 29F, to find myself in the midst of a drama-filled fiasco involving a break-in, a jealous stepsister, and the looming possibility of a lawsuit. Nevertheless, this is how my life has unfolded recently, so let me provide you with a detailed rundown of the chaotic events that have taken place. To give a bit of background, my parents' love story was like a sappy rom-com that turned into a horror flick. They had me at a very early age hence they could not cope with the stress of parenthood along with their work stress. Their continuous fights eventually led them to get divorced when I was barely out of my teens. My mom and dad decided to stay amicable for the sake of me and always continued to have a respectful relationship. When I was in college, my mother found comfort in the arms of the man she believed was the love of her life my soon-to-be stepdad, Carlos. They eventually got engaged and she called to relay the happy news. Although I wasn't thrilled about the fact that she was going to get married again, I also knew that it wasn't my place to interfere in her life or stand in the way of her happiness. I was introduced to Carlos and his stepdaughter who was soon going to be my stepsister, Amelia. Amelia never really liked me from the beginning. It felt like she saw me as a problem, and I couldn't figure out why. Her mom had passed away at an early age hence maybe she thought I was taking away attention from her dad, or she just didn't like the idea of him marrying someone with a kid. Every time we crossed paths, she looked at me with disdain and talked to me rudely. It was obvious that she did not want to accept me or my mother. Because of this, family gatherings became awkward with forced smiles and uncomfortable exchanges where Amelia would make it abundantly clear on several occasions that she wasn't happy about the new family situation. Her dad and my mom attempted to defuse the situation as much as possible. I also tried to be friendly, to build some kind of sisterly bond, but every attempt was met with her ignoring me or making dismissive comments about my appearance or weight. Eventually, the day arrived when my mom and Carlos would be tying the knot. My mother had always wanted a simple wedding so they were getting married in the backyard which had transformed into a makeshift venue with colorful decorations and a charming gazebo where they could exchange their vows. I was nervous and excited about my mother's big day and helped with her wedding dress and makeup. Despite the celebratory atmosphere, Amelia's resentment lingered like a dark cloud. As my mom walked down the aisle, there was a subtle scowl on Amelia's face that betrayed her true feelings. During the vows, I noticed Amelia rolling her eyes and sighing loudly as if the whole affair was beneath her. Other guests were also starting to take notice of her behavior and it was evident that she couldn't stand the idea of this marriage. The party eventually moved on to the reception area which had been set up with homemade decorations and a buffet of everyone's favorite dishes. People were drinking, dancing and overall having a good time. However, Amelia took every opportunity to rain on the parade. She made sarcastic remarks during toasts, creating an uncomfortable atmosphere. Even when people tried to engage her in conversation, she responded with curt one-word answers, displaying her disapproval. As the night progressed, Amelia's behavior became increasingly disruptive. She openly complained about the choice of music, criticized the decorations, and refused to participate in family photos. It was as if she was determined to make her displeasure known, not caring that it was tarnishing what should have been a beautiful day for our family. Her behavior irritated me so much that I wanted to confront her, but my mother tried to calm me down. She suggested that Amelia might be hurting, seeing her dad getting married again and that we should give her space to deal with her emotions. My mother always hoped that Amelia would come around over time but as the years went by, my mother's wish never came true. While my relationship with Carla stayed okay, the tension with Amelia continued to escalate. Whenever I was back at home during my college vacations, I would have to listen to her taunts about how I didn't have any friends or how my fashion sense was so poor. Her dad, my stepdad Carlos, would step in, scolding her and insisting on an apology. The cycle of tension and forced apologies became a recurring theme during those visits. Whenever we had any family gatherings, Amelia would often make sly digs at me, trying to undermine my confidence. She would openly mock my achievements, belittling my grades or any accomplishments. If I told her anything in return, she would try the victim telling everyone how I was always this rude to her. It was always frustrating for me because I would hear her gossiping about me to relatives, spreading false stories to tarnish my image for absolutely no reason. I complained to Carlos multiple times about her behavior but despite his attempts to make her stop, she never changed. Over time, to escape the cloud of negativity with Amelia, I decided to spend more time at my dad's place during holidays instead of going to my mom and Carlos' place. Sure, he lived across the country, making it quite a journey, but the distance was a welcome relief from the constant presence of a jealous and scowling stepsister. My mother, with her hopeful heart, would often try to persuade me to spend holidays with her. However, I couldn't find the heart to tell her about the relentless bullying I endured at the hands of Amelia. She held onto this idealized vision of us getting along, and I didn't want to shatter her dreams. The holidays with my dad were like a safe haven from the bad vibes at my mom's place. I could relax without feeling judged by Amelia. Dad's house became my escape, where I didn't have to deal with mean comments or Amelia's angry stares all the time. One day, when I was in my third year of college, we received some devastating news about my mother. She had gone for a regular health checkup where she was informed that she had third-stage ovarian cancer. 
When she relayed the news to me, I almost collapsed in shock. I couldn't imagine my life without my dear mother. I immediately rushed back home to be there for my mother. Carlos was visibly distraught, trying his best to be strong for all of us. My dad, friends, and family rallied around us, offering support and comfort in the face of this uncertain future. As the days unfolded, we navigated the challenges of medical treatments, hospital visits, and the emotional roller coaster that accompanies such a grim diagnosis. It's worth mentioning that, unfortunately, Amelia didn't contribute in any way to helping my mother during this challenging time. While we were grappling with the harsh realities of cancer, her actions remained indifferent and unhelpful. I remember one night, as everything got tough, I was sitting alone outside my mom's room and crying. I was afraid of losing my mother to cancer and was hoping for some peace in the quiet of the night. But then, out of nowhere, Amelia walked by and noticed that I was crying sitting outside my mom's bedroom. Instead of being nice or understanding, she saw my face all wet with tears and just smirked at me. I looked up at her and she started to taunt how there was nothing that I could do at this point. It was a moment when I needed support, and her mean reaction made everything even harder for me. In the days that came after that night, Amelia didn't stop her cruelty. She went so far as to send me social media posts about how cancer patients looked in their final moments. It was beyond heartbreaking to see how she could make fun of my pain and the agony our family was going through. The lack of empathy was just unbearable. In those difficult days, I found solace in the strength my mother displayed. Her resilience in the face of adversity inspired me. Despite the physical toll the treatments took on her, she remained a beacon of courage, teaching me the true meaning of fighting against the odds. Even as the disease progressed, she maintained a spirit that refused to be extinguished. Unfortunately, my mother passed away in a few months as her cancer spread and the devastation I felt was indescribable. I cried for days not being able to believe that she was really gone. The pain was like a heavy fog, engulfing me all around. The funeral was a somber affair, marked by tearful goodbyes by everyone. The reality of her absence settled in after the funeral, and I grappled with the void that her departure had left in my life. The grieving process was a slow and arduous journey. The realization that I could no longer pick up the phone and hear her voice or share the mundane details of my day was a harsh truth that weighed heavily on my heart. The world continued to spin, but my anchor was gone, and I was adrift in the sea of grief. The day arrived when my mother's will was to be read. My dad, me, Carlos, and Amelia all drove to the lawyer's office together. As my mom's only biological child, I was well aware of the contents of the will, having discussed it with her on several occasions before she passed away. Mom and Carlos had discussed and made it clear that their respective assets would be bequeathed to their own children. It seemed like a fair arrangement, reflective of the intricate dynamics of our blended family. Seated in the lawyer's office, surrounded by an air of formality, the anticipation was palpable. As the lawyer began to read her will, it became evident that all of mom's assets were entrusted to me as Carlos and I had known all along. While this announcement didn't surprise me, the same couldn't be said for Amelia. She sat across the room, her eyes narrowing in disbelief and resentment as the lawyer read the will. In addition to the money and stuff, mom also left me some family heirlooms. She passed on my grandmother's beautiful jewelry to me, and it meant a lot. Those pieces had sentimental value, connecting me to my roots. One precious item she left me was her wedding dress, a symbol of love and family history. It was more than just fabric, it held the memories of mom's special day, and she wanted me to have it. These inheritances weren't just things, they were a part of our family's story, and I cherished them deeply. Upon hearing that she wasn't included in my mother's will nor did she get anything, Amelia erupted angrily. She began to make a scene demanding to check the will to verify if my mother had really left me with everything that she owned. Once she saw the will with her own eyes, she looked up at me angrily shouting that she couldn't believe how selfish my mother was. I sat there in shock as she continued to demand that I should divide my mother's assets with her as she rightfully deserves it. Her words hurt and were an unsettling disruption to the respectful acknowledgement of my mother's wishes. The hurtful accusations she hurled in her pursuit of a piece of the inheritance were like daggers. I was already burdened with grief on account of losing my mother but hearing Amelia's words made me feel betrayed. The audacity she had to demand that she should get an equal share in my mother's assets left me momentarily speechless. Summoning the strength to respond, I sought to maintain a semblance of composure. I told her, my mom got married to your dad when we were both young adults hence they both made their wishes clear from the beginning that we would be getting their respective assets. It's not about being selfish, it's about respecting the agreement our parents had with each other. This is what they believed was fair, and I intend to honor my mom's wishes. Amelia tried to complain again, but Carlos cut her off telling her firmly that she had no right to ask for anything from me. He reminded her that someday, she would inherit his assets, and she wouldn't appreciate it if I demanded a share at that time. This seemed to shut her up. My dad, who was there with us, got up to walk me out of the room. I had often shared stories with him about Amelia's erratic behavior, but this was the first time he had witnessed it himself. He was completely shocked and disgusted by her sense of entitlement. My dad advised me to move out of Carlos' place and move all my childhood things as well as my mother's things and family heirlooms to his house so Amelia could not steal it from me. 
I agreed and immediately moved everything that belonged to me and my mother out of Carlos' place. Carlos was sad to see me move out, and so was I, because and unlike Amelia, he always treated me with respect and love. He has continued to check up on me and made sure that I was doing okay in my life. I went on to graduate from my college and eventually secured a job. Fast forward to the point where I saved up enough money to live on my own. The assets my mother left for me weren't substantial, but they were sufficient to help me secure a place of my own. My dad was very proud of me and even came to visit. Staying at my new place, I often found myself missing my mom, wishing she could see the space I had created. I kept her wedding dress safely in my wardrobe and whenever I started to miss her a lot, I would hug the dress, as if embracing the memory of my mother. Not long ago, Carlos gave me a call to share the news that Amelia was tying the knot. Surprisingly, I found myself genuinely happy for her, setting aside our past grievances. Carlos, in his usual enthusiastic manner, invited me for lunch, expressing that it had been quite a while since we caught up. He wanted to prepare my favorite meal. Although I hesitated a bit, he reassured me that Amelia had grown more mature since our last meeting, and he promised to ensure a smooth and pleasant interaction. During lunch at Carlos' place, everything seemed to be going smoothly. Amelia looked genuinely happy to see me and I warmly congratulated her for her upcoming marriage. We were having lunch while discussing our lives and how much it had changed since we last met each other. She showed me pictures of her engagement and I could see how happy she looked with my soon-to-be Bill. As we sat around the table, enjoying the meal Carlos had prepared, Amelia unexpectedly dropped a bombshell. In a casual tone, she mentioned that she was still on the hunt for the perfect wedding dress but had been unsuccessful. Then, out of nowhere, she brought up the idea that she remembered my mother had left a wedding dress for me and asked me to give it to her as a wedding gift. I looked up at her in shock. The shock on my face mirrored Carlos's surprise. I asked her if she was joking with me because there was no way she would ask me for my mother's wedding dress but Amelia replied that because she was getting married before me, she deserved to wear the dress. I couldn't believe her callous words. I firmly stated that this was not something I could ever consider, emphasizing the sentimental value it held for me after our mother's passing. I reminded her that it was not just a piece of clothing but a cherished memory of my mother. Amelia, on the other hand, seemed dismissive of my sentiments. She argued that since we were stepsisters and shared a part of our mother's life, she had an equal right to wear the dress. The atmosphere grew heavy with tension, and I couldn't fathom why she would want to take something so meaningful from me. Carlos attempted to defuse the situation, telling Amelia that she had no right to demand my mother's wedding dress, but Amelia seemed resolute in her desire stating that she was ready to pay me for the dress if that's what I wanted. The tension continued to rise as I felt hurt and frustrated that she couldn't understand the importance of the dress to me. Carlos, sensing the escalating conflict, tried to explain to Amelia that it wasn't about money but the dress itself meant a lot to me as it was something that my mother had left behind for me. Amelia then began to say how my mother would have given her the dress had she been alive and I was just being selfish. I couldn't believe the audacity of her claim, especially considering how she had treated me over the years. I angrily pointed out to her that she had no concern for my mother when she was dying of cancer and yet she now had a sudden desire to wear my mother's dress out of nowhere. The exchange started to become more heated as we continued to yell at each other. I reiterated that the dress was not negotiable and that I couldn't fathom parting with such a meaningful keepsake. Amelia's insistence and apparent disregard for my feelings intensified the conflict. Carlos tried to calm down the situation but I realized that Amelia was not going to back down. I decided to leave their place immediately as I had spoken my mind and was not going to sit there and be disrespected further by Amelia. I thanked Carlos for the meal and left. I told my dad about this whole incident and he was just as shocked as me. He suggested that I should immediately install cameras around my place along with an alarm system. I thought this was a bit overdramatic but knowing Amelia's crazy antic, I decided to listen to my dad. Cut to today. I am at work, swamped with meetings when suddenly my phone blows up with alarm notifications from my home security system. Concerned, I opened the app to see an unidentified man wearing a mask entering my place. I immediately panicked when I saw the thief in my place. I dial 911 at lightning speed and race home as if my life depended on it. As I screech into my driveway, cop cars are scattered in front of my place. I dash inside with a worried look only to find police officers in the process of arresting the man. His legs are bleeding. Apparently, my dog took serious offense to this intruder's unwelcome visit and turned into a full-fledged guard dog. When the police turned him around to escort him out, I couldn't help but let out an audible sigh of relief. I recognized him immediately from Amelia's engagement pictures, he's my soon-to-be Bill. When he noticed me standing in the doorway, he began shouting, demanding that I speak to the police and vouch for him. He started explaining that he was only here to take my mother's wedding dress because my stepsister had pressured him into doing it. My eyes widened in shock as the absurdity of the situation struck me, breaking into a house on someone else's orders. I couldn't fathom how he got himself into such a ridiculous predicament. I shook my head in disbelief, but before I could react, the police intervened and took him away. I then called my dad, recounting what had just happened at my place. He assured me that he would catch the next available flight to be with me. 
Feeling comforted by the thought of my father's support, I carefully went through my house to check if anything was missing. Fortunately, my mother's wedding dress, safely tucked away in my wardrobe, remained untouched. It seemed my Bill's ill-conceived plan had failed after my dog had bravely intervened by attacking him. I couldn't help but smile in satisfaction as I patted my dog. But oh, the drama doesn't end there. My jealous stepsister and her relatives have been calling me demanding that I should drop my charges against her partner. She is insisting that he is part of the family and I should forgive him. I have told them to keep their opinions to themselves because the last time I checked, the family doesn't break into your house and try to snatch your heirlooms. I have also threatened to sue her and her partner for the damages caused to my property. Amelia keeps saying that I'm going to ruin their lives but this time, I'm going to stand my ground. This is my mother's legacy we're talking about. The dress stays with me, and my sister and my soon-to-be Bill better lawyer up because we're going to court. The family's mad, but I have got evidence and the law on my side. So, Ida for defending my turf and my mom's memory against a thief? Update 1, it's been a few days since my last update. I had a conversation with Carlos regarding everything that happened. He was just as shocked as me and had no idea about what Amelia and her partner had been up to. Amelia had knowingly kept her dad in the dark about her partner's breaking and entering and subsequent arrest, knowing that he would not support her antics. Carlos assured me that he would stand by whatever decision I made. Meanwhile, Amelia has continued to reach out to me every day. When she realized that I wasn't going to back down, she started to apologize. This was shocking to me as throughout the years I had known her, she never apologized to me about anything. I guess, watching her partner get arrested had finally made her realize what they had done. She begged me for mercy and pleaded that I should drop the charges against him. She assured me that she would never disturb me in the future but after all the years she had spent bullying me, I knew her words held no value. I firmly told her that I would continue to press charges and would see both of them in the small claims court soon. My dad and I have contacted a lawyer who can help us in this situation. Regarding Amelia's relatives who were pressuring me to drop the charges, I took a decisive step. I sent out a mass email with a video clip from my security camera. This video clearly showed how my bill broke into my home. I knew Amelia would have spun a different story to them, and I couldn't let that happen. No sane person would support such an outrageous act. After sending the email, some of her relatives did reach out to me, apologizing. They had no idea about the truth of the situation, and my evidence opened their eyes. It was a relief to know that at least some of them understood the reality of what went down and acknowledged the wrongfulness of the break-in. Update 2, it's been one month since my last update. I could not update earlier as I was busy with my legal proceedings. As I had mentioned earlier, I decided to go through with the charges, seeking justice for the intrusion into my home. The legal battle unfolded where I was awarded $1,000 for the damages caused to my property during the break-in. I turned to look at my stepsister's face who looked utterly destroyed, perhaps realizing that her actions do have consequences. Her partner faced criminal charges for breaking and entering and was sentenced to only three months in jail because he didn't actually steal anything from my place. My lawyer didn't stop there and has also issued my stepsis and her partner with a restraining order. It's a necessary measure to ensure my safety and protect against any further attempts to disrupt my life. Throughout this entire ordeal, my dad has been staying with me for support. He's still worried that Amelia might try something again, but I doubt she'll have the nerve after getting hit with a restraining order and a $1,000 fine. The legal consequences will have put a damper on any further attempts for her to cause any trouble. Update 3, it's been 6 months since my last update. My life has moved forward by now, and thankfully, there is no longer any drama. The chaotic events that once defined my days have become distant memories. The legal battles, the family tensions, and the emotional roller coaster have all subsided, allowing me to find a semblance of peace in my life. Since the court proceedings, Amelia and her partner have kept their distance from me. The restraining order served its purpose, providing a protective barrier against any potential disruptions they might have caused. I did hear from some of our mutual friends that Amelia got married to him after he was released from prison. Honestly, I believe they both deserve to be with each other, knowing how crazy they both are. As I reflect on the turbulent journey of the past months, I have come to realize the importance of resilience and standing up for what is right. The legal battles were not just about seeking justice for myself but also about upholding the values and memories that my mother held dear. I find myself in a calmer, more stable place in life. It's a new chapter, and I look forward to what the future holds, free from the tumultuous drama that once defined my existence.